On day one, I spawned in as Mr. Beast. Awesome, dude. I bet I could do all kinds of crazy stuff. That's when I noticed something was wrong. I only have five hearts and I'm so weak. My inventory was empty as well. Even worse. I checked on my subscribers and... Wait, what? Where did they all go? I hadn't gone far until I came across a town. It was on fire. Villagers were running everywhere, panicking. I ran into the village to see if I could help. I tried to calm people down, but they were too scared. When I got to the center of the town, I was shocked. It was a giant beast burger rampaging through the town. This is not what I made beast burger for. It's supposed to be nutritious. Well, well, well. Look who it is. It's Mr. Beast. Impressed at your creation? I built beast burger to make people happy, dude. Not destroy their lives. I am no mere delicious sandwich. I am a god! You're nothing special, man. You leave these villagers alone, or else you're gonna have to deal with me. <laughs> Look at you! No subs! No cash! You're washed up as my locally grown lettuce! Later, loser! I tried to get the burger to face me, but he just blew me off. Wow, what a jerk. On day two, I woke up and got straight to work, building wooden tools to help me get started. I just finished my shovel when I heard an explosion coming from the town. Can't this place catch a break? I ran over and saw the streets being overrun by creepers. Oh man, I had to defend the town. And this time, I had a sword. I swung at the beasts. I swung at all of them, driving them out of the town. Yeah, that's right. Get out of here, dude. Just then, the villager elder came back to the town. He looked upset. Hey, man, how's it going? My restaurant did this? No way. Don't worry, elder. I'm Mr. Beast, and I'll fix this. And once I do, I'll stop this killer burger, too. Well, I'm here to prove you otherwise. I'll fix your town, rebuild my brand, and get all my subscribers back. You'll see. I grabbed my tools and got to work. I started repairing the Beast Burger restaurant. It wasn't much, but it was a start to build up my huge factory again. This one's gonna be bigger and better than ever. With some of the repairs done, I turned my attention to the subscriber problem. Luckily, I'm Mr. Beast, and that means challenge time. I decided to start small and recreate a classic, Buried Alive. I dug a pit and put a small bunker at the bottom. I'll put someone in there, bury them, and for every 24 hours they spend down there, I'll give him $10,000. I wanted to start immediately, but it was getting late. So I expanded my sleeping quarters a bit to give myself some proper leg room. Once that was done, I settled in for the night. But on day three, I had the strangest dream. I woke up and walked outside and I was standing on the actual moon. I could see the stars and oh my gosh. I could also see a huge crowd of little green moon men standing in front of me. They were standing behind what looked like a moon king. We love you, Mr. Beast. Your content is amazing. Hey man, the best fans deserve the best. I grant you permission to build as many beasts burgers as you wish on our humble planet. Everyone cheered me and it felt great. I had all my subscribers back and I was able to make not just Earth, but the entire galaxy happy. I woke up sad that it was just a dream. Then I remembered dreams are nothing but ideas and I'm going to turn those ideas into reality every single day. I vow to make it to the moon and get all those little green moon men to subscribe. Day four, I was digging some more ore when something crazy had happened. My pickaxe leveled up. It was my magic pickaxe. Sweet. Everything I hit turns into a bunch of iron. It's not diamond, but uh, it's a start. I used my pickaxe to create an infinite supply of iron. I took it and forged a bunch of iron and weapons and armor. I can give these to the villagers so they can defend ourselves in case the burger attacks again. Speaking of villagers, it was time to kick off the Buried Alive challenge. I spent the day talking to the villagers. Surprisingly, a bunch of them wanted to participate. Sorry, guys. I can only pick one, but if you all subscribe to Mr. Beast, I'll definitely hit you up later for more challenges. Yeah, man. More subs. That's what I like to hear. After an exhausting search, I picked up my contestant, Brad. Now, Brad was a fisherman, and all around a nice guy with a very handsome smile. I had him hop into the bunker I built, and then I got to work burying him. Wow, dude, that's a lot of dirt. Luckily, he has plenty of food down there, and I even installed a small pipe so I can talk to him. How are you doing down there, Brad? <laughs> Awesome. Well, we'll get back to checking on you later. I spent the rest of the day thinking of new and exciting challenges. So much work, so little time. On day five, I woke up to villagers knocking on my door for food. Even with some of my repairs, the Beast Burger restaurant was nowhere near open for business. No way could I let my villagers go without a juicy Beast Burger, though. I got my tools and got back to work. I was building away when I was interrupted by a bunch of cows. Yo, what's up, cows? How's it going? Oh, well, I suppose that's fair. What do you suggest? I promised the cows I'd see what I could do and went to meet with the chickens. Hey, chickens, how do you feel about being in the latest Beast Burger experience? You'll be super famous, guys, I promise. 
clearly I needed a way to settle this debate. And what better way to do it than another challenge? The circle. I built an elevated circle and had the chickens and cows gather inside it. As time goes on, the circle is going to go smaller and smaller. And if any of them fall out or step out of the line, they're done. The winner will be the last standing and as a prize will be taken off the menu. Good luck, guys. Hang in there. Day six started with me checking on Brad. Morning, Brad. How's the weather down there? Uh -huh. Awesome, man. Good to hear. Good luck, dude. I got back to work forging as many iron weapons as I could. I went around town handing out as many of my wares for free to any villager who wanted them. Here you guys go. A gift from me to help keep you guys safe. Just don't forget to subscribe, okay? The villagers were stoked and they showered me with subs. As the count grew, I could feel myself growing stronger. I have 10 hearts now. Yes. With each subscriber, I get one step closer to defeating that evil burger. I also noticed that I had something weird in my inventory. A seed? Huh. I decided to plant the seed, gave it water, and waited. It was a tree. Okay, but wait, wait a second. What's that? Is that money? What? It is. I have a money tree now. Well, you all wondered how I got it from, so here it is. I harvested the money. This will definitely come in handy. I was about to start working on my next challenge, and all of a sudden, Chris spawned in. <laughs> Yo, what's up, Chris? We're trying to get all our subscribers back and defeat a giant burger monster. You missed out on a lot. I'm trying to come up with a new challenge to help boost our popularity. Any ideas? <laughs> Chris, you're a genius. We get two mobs, one from a hot climate, one from a cold climate, and we have them both see who can last the longest in the other's biome. It's a genius idea. I took Chris back to the restaurant and built a little shed from the sleep in. Ah, get some rest, buddy. Tomorrow's gonna be huge. On the morning of day seven, Chris and I got to work building our next challenge. This one was gonna be tough as we needed to fit two biomes, a lava biome and an ice biome into one confined room. I didn't want any lava leaking out and wrecking the town. Not after I'd spent all that time rebuilding it. We got the rooms ready. I was interrupted by a noise outside. I ran out to see what was going on and saw a snow golem arguing with a blaze. What were they doing here? I told them what I was building and they'd be perfect for the challenge. If you guys can stay in each other's biome for a week, I'll give you guys both $50,000 in cash and declare a winner. Sound good? Both the snow golem and blaze agreed. Sweet. I still needed to finish that room though and for that, I needed ice. I traveled a short way out of town to a nearby mountain. I began to gather as much as I could. This challenge is gonna rock. Suddenly, I realized I wasn't alone. A pack of snow wolves appeared. Uh, hey guys, how's it going? The wolves weren't interested in what I had to say and they attacked. Luckily, I had my magic pickaxe. I smacked the leader and it turned into a statue. Yeah, you look great in my restaurant lobby, you wolf. Seeing this, the other wolves ran away. Hey, don't forget to subscribe, guys. Oh, they did. Sorry about your leader. I gathered the ice I'd harvest and I made the travel back to town. I dropped the ice in the challenge room and decided to call it a day. Day eight began with me and Chris digging for some lava. I didn't feel like heading to like an active volcano, so I figured this would do. We dug deeper and deeper into the earth. How far down does this thing go? It grew darker and darker until we weren't able to see. Luckily, we found a coal vein. I went back to the surface to gather some more wood. Time to make some torches. I placed down a crafting table and made some torches for me. I hopped my way back to where I was. Hey, Chris, got some light. Suddenly, there was rumbling. Uh-oh, what's going on now? The ground cracked and gave away. Just then, there was a roar, and the cave lit up with fire. You're not getting my friend, whatever you are. I peered into the gloom, and out in the darkness came a huge lava golem. You have trespassed in my domain. Speak. We're sorry we fell in your house, man. We were just looking for lava. You dare come in here and steal my life source? You dare wield a weapon in my house? Wait, wait a second. Hey, you're Mr. Beast, right? Uh, yeah, that's me. Oh my god, oh my god, no way. I'm a huge fan of yours, dude. I was literally just watching your stuff. I'm a proud subscriber, you know. Oh, so you are. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, dude. No matter how giant and scary they might seem. I'm sorry for scaring you. I don't get many people down here. I suck at social confrontation. No, don't worry about it at all, dude. You said you needed lava right here. Grab as much as you want. Sweet. Well, thanks, Lava Golem. Here, take this. $10,000 in cash. Oh my god, sweet. I'm rich. The Lava Golem retreated back into his lair, leaving us with all the lava we could ever need. What can I say? My fans are the best. Chris and I managed to dig our way out of the cave and got back to the challenge room. It was just as much as a challenge setting it up. On day nine, I got up and went to meet the Blaze and Snow Golem. It was time for their challenge to begin. The Blaze went into the snow half. The Snow Golem went into the lava half. And I shut the door. Good luck, guys. It was also time to check back with the circle challenge. The cows and chickens were doing great. They were all standing one on top of the other. Pat's commitment. Still, this was a challenge after all. I shrank the circle. Oh, down they both go. Well, everyone is definitely out of the circle. But who was the last one? Guys, calm down. We can fix this. How about you both won? The animals were confused, but I explained to them that we can have both sandwiches on the menu anyway. That way I can give both of them a break. My genius was pretty apparent and both mobs agreed to stop fighting. Suddenly a villager appeared. He said that the next town was being destroyed by a giant beast burger. On day 10, we made it to the nearby town. Oh no, it's just like before. There was destruction everywhere. Panic in the streets, cats and villagers fleeing everywhere and a giant evil burger monster standing in my way. Beast burger, turn and face me, you sesame seeded coward. Well, look who 
it is. The has been. Speak for yourself. You're gonna be yesterday's hash burger beast. We fought. I hit him with my sword. A good hit. But he was faster than I thought for a hunk of meat. Lucky hit, beast boy. But you're still no match for me. Get back here, coward. I still wasn't strong enough to defeat him outright. But his day will come. Our epic battle can't be missed. I had a duty to my fellow villagers. Why don't you guys come back and live in my town? It's burger proof. And if you subscribe, I'll enter you all into a drawing for $10,000 every month. They seem to believe me as my sub count started to soar. I couldn't do anything without you. I led them back to my village and got them settled in, building them houses fit for a king. My town was really coming together. I decided to turn in for the night. Days 11 through 12 saw me surprising my villagers with something awesome. Trust me, guys, you won't see this coming. It's the world's first Mr. Beast coaster. I figured the town could use some fun after all the burger-related stress, and they seemed to agree. But it wouldn't be me if I didn't try and raise the game a little bit. All right, villagers, I have built the most insane roller coaster for you. You guys can ride it, but the last one that gets off will win $10,000. The villagers are stoked, so I set them off on the ride of the Mr. Beast coaster. I'll check in on them later on the day. But for now, let's see how Brad's holding up underground. Hey, Brad, can you hear me? All right, Brad. Nice checking in. I brought some burgers, dude. I sent them down the tube. I trust Brad will be fine. Back at the roller coaster, I found everyone lying on the floor. Guess they couldn't conquer the challenge. I'm a good sport, though, and handed them all some money. Good job, guys. Days 13 to 15 arrived, and I was ready to open up the hot versus cold biome challenge. I broke open the door and peeked inside. Oh, hey, are you guys okay? It took some doing, but I was able to chip the blaze free and drag them both outside. Sorry about that, dude. Uh, here. I built him a new body out of snow from the room and left the blaze in the shining sun to thaw. It seems you both have found a newfound respect for each other's bones, right? They both agreed and made up. I hope they stay friends for life. Oh, don't forget to subscribe. Awesome. On days 16 to 18, I saw my second friend Chandler spawn in. Hey, what's up, Chandler? Don't sweat the small stuff, all right? We got some sweet challenges to pull off. A private island. There ought to be tons of mobs there that I can get to subscribe to my channel. I spent the next few days getting ready, grilling burgers and chicken sandwiches, collecting sand to turn them into glass to carry all the water we needed, and making sure to check my town defenses. I didn't feel comfortable just leaving them alone, so I traveled back underground and got my good friend Lava Golem to work for me. Please, keep the town safe till I get back, all right? If you do, beast burgers for life. The Lava Golem agreed to look after my village. Thanks, man. With everything set, I packed my stuff and set out, heading west towards the ocean. I reached the beach on days 19 to 21. The island I was looking for was several miles offshore. Now, all I needed to do was build a humble boat. Nothing fancy. I can be modest when I need to be. I got to work and whipped up a yacht. I'd only been at sea for a few hours when something bumped into the bottom of my boat. Whoa. Sorry, Salmon. Is everything okay? That's awful. Can I help? I can't say no to those. It was too good of an offer to pass up. He tossed me a potion of water breathing. Here goes nothing. Hopefully I won't regret this decision. A few feet down and I could see the wreck. It was full of sharks. Was I crazy? I snuck around the sharks as best as I could, sticking to the shadows and trying not to be seen. I made it inside the wreck. Where are those eggs? Aha! Uh -huh. Found them. Eggs safely in my hand, I began to make my way back to the surface. And I was able to return the egg to the salmon, who thanked me and subscribed. You're welcome, buddy. On days 22 to 24, I made it on the island. I got to work building my camp, which was to be my home for the the next week. As I was putting the finishing touches to my base, I saw a lobster watching me from a nearby hill. Hey, what's up, lobster? You want to subscribe to me? You can have the chance to win some sweet, sweet money. It was a turtle. Oh, hey, dude. I didn't see you there. Perfect. You're just in time for the first challenge, the coconut challenge. I dug a hole in the sand and tasked the turtle to find and drop a coconut in the hole. Last one to do so loses. Just then, the lobster reappeared. Of course you can, lobster. Quick, go find a coconut. The two teams were off. The lobster possessed the slight tactical advantage of being able to walk on land. Lobster wins. <laughs> guys, guys, settle down. Look, tomorrow's challenge will be even better. They both agreed to come back. I guess I'm gonna have to be more mindful of the creature's different traits. Every challenge needs to be fair after all. Days 25 to 28 were spectacular. The weather was perfect. The skies were clear and I had a whole new challenge for Team Lobster and Team Turtle. Which team is your favorite? Comment below. I gathered the teams on the beach and laid out the second challenge. Extreme hide and seek. I'm a bit of a hide and seek master. So if you guys can evade me finding you for the next 48 hours, you win another 10 grand on top of whatever you've already won. How does that sound? Everyone agree this is 
much more fair. Okay, teams. Ready, set, go. I can't do 100. The turtle I was fairly confident I would find, but the lobster might prove difficult. I decided to hit the water first and swam around the entire island, careful to keep an eye out for any jellyfish. Aha! There's the turtle. You couldn't fool me. With one found, I was fairly confident I could find the lobster, but I couldn't find him, actually. I yelled all over the island, even offering him double to come out, but no luck. As night fell, I settled in, hoping to find him in the morning. Days 29 to 32 saw me deep in the jungle that spanned the private island. By this point, I was getting pretty worried. Where was this lobster? I was about to head back to the camp when I heard something. It was coming from what looked like a narrow cave. Hold on, little buddy. I made my way carefully into the slippery cave and found my friend. Here you go, dude. Have an impossible beast burger. It'll heal you right up. I picked up the lobster and was about to leave when I noticed something. Is that a temple? It was. An ancient ice temple. I couldn't resist trying the door, but of course, it was locked. Well, I know what we're up to tomorrow. Let's get you back to base, little guy. I took the lobster back to the base and met up with the turtle, filling him in on the day's discovery. The turtle wasn't too thrilled to mess with ancient secrets, but agreed to let me have a look in exchange for an impossible beast burger and $10,000. I turned in, excited for what tomorrow would bring. I was up at the crack of dawn on days 33 to 35. Both the lobster and the turtle brought me their keys and I spent the first day over a hot forge, melting them together. After all that hard work, the ocean key was in my hand. What better way to end a private island challenge than by cracking open some ancient secrets? Key in my hand, I made my way back to the temple. I hope this works. It's open. Who dares disturb my slumber? Oh, wow. Uh, who are you? I am the ancient spirit of this island, bound in icy chains for a millennia. If ever I was released, I would bring doom and despair to this planet. Oh, boy. Well, we can't have that, so uh, here you go. An official Mr. Beast t-shirt. This will keep you warm in those icy chains, skeleton guy. Well, you know, it is quite comfy. Is this 100% cotton? Only the best merch for my fans, dude. Dude, come on, of course. Yeah, good stitching too. Do you mind if I snag another one? I've got some demon minions in here that just love your content. Only if you guys all agree to subscribe. Awesome. If I'd known my merch could stop any apocalypse, I would have built more stores. I wrapped up my private island challenge on days 36 to 38 after building my friends a permanent merch store to keep the demon at bay. Who said being a YouTuber wasn't eventful? I thanked them for participating with me and wished them luck. All right, see you guys. And thanks for the subs. As I checked my sub counter, I realized I crossed another milestone. My pickaxe began to vibrate in a flash of the light it upgraded itself wow now it makes gold i was careful to stow it in my inventory and made my way down to my boat i bid goodbye to the island and made the long journey home days 39 to 41 saw me finally returning home i turned my beast burger restaurant into a full-on beast burger factory sick now no one has to go without my top quality products i reunited with chris and chandler hey guys you miss me yet you want to believe the subs i got Hmm, I don't trust it though. We better make sure all of our defenses are in order. Plus, I have a build that's gonna signal to the entire world that Mr. Beast is back. I had the boys patrol the perimeter while I went looking for some wool. There were some sheep right outside town who looked promising, so I offered to build them their own field in our town, which they could help themselves in exchange for their wool. They agreed and followed me back, where I began dyeing their wool blue and pink for my next build. I was gonna create the biggest Mr. Beast logo the world had ever seen. I was hoping to be done by days 42 to 44, but unfortunately, that's when our old foe decided decided to show its perfectly seasoned face back. About time you got back, heard you were swimming with the fishes. Yeah, and I got all of them subbed, thank you. What do you want? I've come to offer you a little challenge. I heard you like those, beast boy. All right, a challenge? Bring it on then. If you and your cronies can survive five days at the top of a mountain, I'll leave you alone forever. Pinky swear. I never back down from a challenge. You're on, man. With his quest accepted, the burger beast left. I didn't fully trust him, but I figured it was a shot, so why not? Plus, there are bound to be even more subscribers up there. I gathered the boys, and we loaded up with some water, food, and gear. How hard can this be after all, right? On days 45 to 47, we traveled until we reached the base of the mountain. Jeez, it's huge. The path at the top would take a whole day, crisscrossing a bunch of treacherous paths and slippery ice climbs. One false move, and one of us would plummet to the bottom in a heartbeat. I led the way, picking my way carefully up this dangerous mountain side. Halfway up the mountain, we came across a suspension bridge. I don't know about this, guys. Chandler decided to go first. Thanks, dude. He was halfway across when he slipped on some ice and dropped his inventory. Great. There goes our food and water. At least you're okay, man. Luckily, the rest of the trail was bridge-free, and we made it to base camp. I used our remaining supplies to build a few small shelters for us to rest in. Hey, this isn't so bad. Still, we needed to figure out our food situation fast. Chandler, what are you doing? Are you on the phone? <laughs> How's the pizza gonna make it up here, man? 
Even with the pizza on its way, I was still worried about our food and water situation. Guess that's a tomorrow problem. We woke up on days 48 to 50 to clear skies. Glad we survived that storm. There was no time for sightseeing though. We decided to split up and see what we can find. I struck out from base camp, hoping to find something, anything that could help us. I hadn't made it a mile before I saw something. What is that? It's a penguin. But what's it running from? A polar bear? That's not good. I ran to the penguin's defense. Get back here, you bully. Leave this little guy alone. I attacked the polar bear. It was a fierce battle, but short. Yeah, thanks, my guy. That bear was being a total jerk. Hey, no problem, penguin. Why was he attacking you anyway? Some mobs are just haters, man. What can I say? I was just trying to enjoy some hot spring action, and he chased me. Hot springs? That sounds exactly what I'm looking for. Can you take me there? Sure, man. Now that that bully's gone, we could go party all day, dude. The penguin ended up being a really cool guy. We hung out in the hot spring all day. I probably should have found my friends, but I figured they could do some hard work for a change. Besides, they found me eventually. Sup, guys? Find any food? They had. A few old frozen potatoes, sure, but it was good enough to eat. We warmed them up in the hot springs and settled in for what seemed like the easiest challenge yet. Hey, I'll take that easy W whenever I can. On days 51 to 53, it was time we headed back down the mountain. I wanted to thank my new penguin bro, so I planted money trees around the spring for him. Now you can chill here for as long as you want, dude. My guy, you're the best, Mr. Beast. The penguin promised he'd get his whole extended family subscribed. What a guy. I'll never forget that little penguin friend. I hope he's still partying like a legend. We packed up our camp and made the long journey back down the mountain. We were about halfway back when we saw a villager frozen completely solid. I couldn't let the poor guy suffer, especially not someone this committed to quality customer service. I thanked the villager for the info and pie and set off back down the mountain as fast as I could. Days 54 to 56 saw us running to get back to our base. Come on, guys. Just a little farther. Wait, what's that smell? It smells, uh, awful. It was coming from a huge factory. It was pumping out creepers like crazy. Wait a second. Is that a mob farm? Oh, I know who's behind this. Burger Beast, show yourself. Welcome back, loser. Enjoy your vacation? I knew I couldn't trust you. This has to end. With my army of mobs, your subscribers won't matter if I blow them sky high. You know what? I'm tired of fighting. It's time we raise the stakes. I challenge you, Beast Burger. Name your challenge. There's nothing a talking burger can't do. Ever heard of a little thing called Squid Games? Team versus team. Winner leaves forever. Easy. I accept. Prepare to be humiliated. My challenge challenge accepted. It was time to get to work. Finally, on days 57 to 59, we set up and began our first of many grueling challenges. Begin your foolish squid game. My world conquest awaits. Before the game began, I wanted to hype up my team, so I gave them all bonus incentive. If no one gets caught in a red light, the whole team walks away with $50,000 in cash each. This total did the trick. My squids were pumped. Listen to your overlord squidlings. Win and live. Lose and die. The burger commands it. Okay, then. Here are the rules. We have two teams of squids, mine and yours. Our first game is red light, green light. If any squid is caught moving on a red light, they're out. First one of the statue over there wins. The game began. It was close with a few near misses for my team. But by the halfway point, it was clear that my cash prize was an amazing confidence boost and my team clinched the deal. How's that taste, Beast Burger? That game is lame. Get on with the next challenge. We spent days 60 to 62, building the next challenge and getting everyone ready. This one was a classic, the honeycomb build challenge. Okay, squids, listen up. This challenge is a fun one. In just a few minutes, we'll reveal one of the three shapes to each of the two teams. There's a triangle, a circle, and an umbrella. Whatever shape you get, you have to build using the blocks provided. First team to finish wins. Okay, my team, what shape do we have? It was an umbrella. Oh man, it's the hardest one to make. Don't worry, guys, we got this. To make matters worse, team two got the circle. Ha! An easy victory. Surrender and die. All right, all right. Uh, don't listen to them, guys. We got this, okay? And time. Okay, that was so close. Let's check to see what we've got. Team one. That is a beautiful umbrella. Perfectly done. And for team two, um, it's not really a circle. What do you mean? It clearly is. I don't know, man. Aren't circles round? But it's Minecraft. There aren't any curved lines. 
change. I didn't make the engine, man. Only the rules. And by those, team one wins again. On day 63 to 65, I was ready to take that overgrown roll down. Two chairs is this thing? Yup. In round three, the rules are simple. Extreme musical chairs. Me versus you. Winner takes all. <laughs> I shall enjoy crushing you, puny flesh bag. Bring it on, dude. Chandler took the second chair away. Start the music, Chris. This was it. The music started. Jeez, he was so fast. Don't sweat it, Mr. Beast. Think of the villagers, the subs. You got this. I won. No! Musical chairs, my greatest weakness. And that's game, set, and match. Match burger, which means get out of here. You will regret this, Mr. Beast. Uh uh. Remember the deal shut down your mob factory and don't come back. With the burger beast gone, the squids from both teams cheer. Hey, no worries, guys. Thanks so much for playing. Don't forget to subscribe to me for a chance to win $50,000 in the next week. That's more like it. I'm at 15 hearts now. Wait, my pickaxe is changing again. It transformed into a diamond pickaxe. Now, anything I hit is going to turn into diamonds. I think it's time for an upgrade. Day 66 to 68 were used to radically upgrade my town for the better. I tricked it out, reinforcing walls and adding a ton of riches to my already amazing town. The villagers were impressed too, especially after I reforged a bunch of diamond weapons and armor to equip with them. No one can mess with us now. I knew that even though he'd left, Burger Beast would never truly be defeated until I put him into the ground for good. That night, I looked up at the stars, wondering where my next subscribers could come from. That's when I remembered my dream. There's the moon. But how will I even get there? I needed something explosive. Very explosive. Hopefully I won't blow up, but this guy sounds awesome. I'll check him out. Thanks, dude. I spent the night drawing up plans for my rocket ship. The build would be tricky, but I was confident I can pull it off. On day 69 to 73, I was on the hunt for my gunpowder guy. How hard could it be to find him? I was in the desert, but I didn't hear any explosions. Whoa, did you see that? That had to be my guy. I hope he survived that. I finally found what looked like a mad scientist lab. Is that a Yeti on a pile of TNT? Hey, no need to do that, man. It's me, Mr. Beast. The TNT went off and the Yeti went flying. Oh my gosh, he hit the atmosphere. Where did he go? I told the scientist what I was up to. Of course, I listened carefully. So the gunpowder guy asked me to find his backup detonator. He said he dropped it in this cave. I wonder why he can't do it. Oh my, the whole cave is full of TNT. I had to be super careful here. If I so much as brush one of the TNT crates, the whole cave would go off. I cautiously picked my way through the cave, holding my breath every time I had to pass by one of those crates. Easy, careful, Ugh, too close. Eventually, I found what I was looking for. The detonator, score. Time to get out of, oh no, a lit fuse. Go, go, go. Barely made it out before the cave exploded behind me. The whole cave is gone. At least my challenges never get that dangerous. With the detonator in my hand, I made my way back to the gunpowder guy. <laughs> Dude, you almost got me killed. I was a little nervous trusting this guy, but if I was to make it to the moon and get those moon base subs, I had little choice but to offer him a place back to my base. I helped him pack up his equipment and away we went. Moon, here I come. Days 78 to 80 went by in a blur of activity as we started to build our rocket ship. We needed everything. Iron, diamond, gold, wood, sand, literally everything. So I went around and paid the entire village to help out. We started a massive mine right under the village and were able to put thousands and tons of minerals out every day. We worked day and night and slowly, slowly, the rocket ship began to take shape. On days 81 to 83, we were almost ready. Just a few more finishing touches and I'd hoped it'd fly soon. Wait, what was that? It was a huge creeper attacking our rocket. If that blows, it'll take the whole ship with it. I grabbed my sword and armor and ran towards it. No, I'm gonna be too late. <laughs> Chandler, wait, no! Chandler forced the giant creeper back, but there was no way he could get away in time. It exploded, taking Chandler with it. Chandler, where are you? I searched everywhere, but I couldn't find him. My rocket was safe, but I'd lose a dear, dear friend. I named my rocket the Chandler in honor of his everlasting memory. This is for you, buddy. Tomorrow, the moon. On days 84 to 86, we were ready to blast off. Everything was checked and ready to go. The TNT was primed, the Chandler was ready to fly, and all I had to do was get in and cross my fingers. A huge crowd gathered to witness this historic, never-before-seen Minecraft event. Fellow villagers, I'll keep this short. Today, we make history and send a YouTuber to the moon. In the event of a catastrophic explosion, I dedicate all my subs, cash, and magic items to the town. Now, wish me luck. I'm going to need it. Okay, guys, light the fuse. Three, two, one, blast off. I was off to space. I was actually pretty nervous. I was gonna be the first YouTuber on the moon, but I knew that I had to do it. I landed on the moon. Well, that was easy. I claimed the moon in the name of Fo 
Bozo. I mean, Mr. Beast. Both are correct. I decided to build a small base for myself. I planted some vegetables to keep my oxygen supplies up. I was stoked to explore the moon tomorrow. I spent days 87 to 89 putting some finishing touches on my moon base. A few more crops, a few more grills, and I should be done. Still, I was eager to explore this strange new world. Hang on. Oh, shoot. The buried alive guy. Brad. I totally forgot about him. Ugh, I'm sure he's okay. I'm not gonna lie. The moon was a little disappointing. I made my way back to my base, trying to plan my next move. When I noticed it had been wrecked. Who could have done this? All my vegetables? My beast burgers? Alien life does exist. I just wish it hadn't eaten up all my stuff. I spent the rest of the time reinforcing my base and keeping an eye out on the horizon. Whatever was out there would certainly be back. On days 90 to 92, I was sweating. I don't like to admit when I get scared, but the idea of some faceless moon monsters watching me from afar was a little freaky, not gonna lie. I dug up some dirt from the surface and was about to build up a perimeter when something sharp flew out of nowhere and hit me. Ah! Was that an arrow? In space? How? I looked around but couldn't see anything. Come out, you coward. Let me see you. I was about to equip my weapons when I started passing out. Oh, no, no. I've been poisoned. I tried to make my way back to my rocket, but the poison overtook me. When I came to, I was surrounded by moon men? Silence, Earthling! You stand before the moon king. We have been watching you since you arrived, and we demand to know why you've come to bother us! I'm sorry if I upset you guys, all right? My name is Mr. Beast, and I'm on a quest for subscribers. Mr. Beast? Subscribers? You speak in riddles. What need to do we, the moon men, have you, Mr. Beast? I don't even know what that meant, but I'm pretty well known for handing out a ton of prizes and cash. Here, have $10,000. Earth paper has no power on the moon. We only trade in moon bucks. All right, well, there has to be something I could do for you then. I'm pretty good at challenges. A challenge, huh? Very well, Earthling. A challenge you shall have. We have recently been attacked by a savage beast. Where it came from? Um, cannot tell the moon man. All we know is that it has been wrecking our moon base and scaring our moon maidens. Take care of that. Consider subscribing. We will. Sure. I can totally take care of that. Where is it at? I'll be back in no time. The moon king gave me a map to the beast's lair and wished me luck. I tracked the beast on days 93 to 95 following the map the moon king had given me. You know, it's really peaceful up here. This would be a perfect place for a merch store. After a long spacewalk across the featureless face of the moon, I came across the beast's lair. It was a massive crater. I can see a cave at the bottom of it. That must be where it's hiding. I cautiously made my way down the crater and entered the cave. Be brave, Mr. Beast. The cave stank and was super dark. I couldn't see. Suddenly there was movement in the cave and the beast appeared. Wait, it's a familiar looking Yeti. Yo, you made it to the moon, man. The Yeti attacked. Take that and that. My sword was doing damage, but the Yeti hit too hard. I needed to end this quickly. Magic pickaxe. Let's go. It worked. The Yeti turned into a diamond statue. I grabbed the statue. Thanks, low gravity. And I made my way back to the moon men's town. I returned on days 96 to 98 to the moon men cheering me. No problem, guys. My pleasure. Just another beast slain by a Mr. Uh, beast. Well, Earthling, it seems we have underestimated you. Thank you for bravery. Subscribe, we will. Definitely such a noble individual. My sub counter went through the roof. I've done it. I can feel my old strength returning. Look at my hearts. A full 20. The beast is back. And my pickaxe was at full strength too. It turned anything it touched into netherite. Yes. I thank the moon king for their help by building them a super awesome merch store. Enjoy, guys. All in all, this was a successful first contact with an alien species. Still, though, I knew in the back of my mind that I had one last score to settle. Hope I don't crash. On day 99, I crashed, but I was unharmed. Luckily, I didn't hit my town. But wait a second. Is that smoke? It is. It's coming from my castle. This was the last straw. I've given that no good burger enough chances. It was time to end this. I made my way back down to my base, building my magic pickaxe. Ha. <sighs> Where is this fool? It's time to grill this burger. We need to defend our base. Next time he shows, I'll end this. Now that I was there, this would be over quickly. I needed to forge an ultimate weapon. Something to take care of this monster. My magic pickaxe turned anything it touched into netherite. Hmm, this gave me an idea. I took the netherite and forged the ultimate burger slaying weapon. A netherite spatula. This is it. On the dawn of day 100, I saw him. The burger beast. He was leading the new attack. I ran outside and confronted him. Burger beast. This is the end for you. I have all my subs behind me. And with all the fans like those, there's no way you'll defeat me. Pathetic. Those numbers would make PewDiePie laugh. I can make as many mobs as I want. What can you possibly do to stop me? The burger attacked with his army, but I stood firm. All my adventures, all my friends made and lost, 
all my subscribers and accomplishments. I could feel them coursing through my veins. I raised my netherite spatula and leapt into the battle. The spatula cleaved through mobs like butter. It's just me and you, Burger Beast. I've waited a long time for this moment. Our last challenge. A duel to the death. You fool! Let this be my final victory! We clashed. The battle could be heard for miles around. The burger was relentless. Each hit knocking chunks off my health. I couldn't just hit it back. I had to get smart. I summoned all my strength. I hit the burger beast onto his back. Critical hit. Get flipped, flop. No! Mr. Beast, forgive me! Seeing their leader defeated, the mobs retreated into the wild. A full 100 days of wacky challenges and friendships. I went to the moon, slept on a mountain, buried a dude alive. Oh, oh my gosh, Brad.